good morning we are going to have the final lecture today uh, on uh, this uh, credit uh, risk and uh, operational risk and uh, what i want to tell you is now last time we discussed about cyber risk and cyber risk is a, it's a part and parcel of information risk so information risk is the general term in that you have cyber risk but uh, in addition to cyber risk uh, under information risk there are several other risks which can uh, risk your information so therefore i will today discuss about a more relevant type of a thing uh, with regard to the information risk and that is uh, it so information technology risk and that uh, that really uh, address directly to your needs so therefore i i just uh, selected some writings from uh, different authoritative sources and then i will just uh, deliver those things into your uh, your computers then your your terminals then what you can do is uh, you can just go through the things and you can really find it as a very relevant type of uh, information with regard to your uh, organizations so then uh, this has a very uh, useful practical you uh, practical type of uh, uh, practical type of a situation so so you what you can do is you can just go through that and see how you can use it in your own organizations and not only that you can really uh, uh, observe or you can really test whether these things are available in your organizations and whether the it people uh, really follow that so that of course uh, is a very important type of a thing where you need to go through and uh, as risk managers or as risk uh, professionals you can really get into the uh, information security aspects of your organization which is very very important because now um, i think about 99 95% of things being done through the digital uh, digital methods or digital uh, ways so therefore uh, this type of uh, security uh, aspect or this type of risk management aspect is very very important right now today's session is uh, really information security essential for it managers and you put it as protecting a mission critical system so what do you mean by mission critical is now you can't really uh, maintain your businesses without the systems so this is what you mean by mission critical system so uh, it is so critical the continuation of the system operations uh, in order to maintain your business so therefore uh, as an overview we will go through the first uh, part of it and uh, even though this is a very textual type of thing i will really tell you the most important thing here so don't uh, think that this is a, just a text but uh, i want to just inform i mean i, I want to just uh, tell you the the core of these things and uh, as an overview so the security managers or it uh, information or whatever uh, who people who really go through these things and who people who really risk manage the the it uh, type of activities in an organization and uh, now you can just look at the the real scope of the information security management it is a business problem now actually people thought it as a technical issue but it is not a technical issue it's a, it's a business issue so therefore it is a critical thing which is uh, necessary for the business so therefore uh, the the infrastructure has to be really uh, uh, followed and that has to be uh, given the necessary uh, security aspects
now you just see uh, uh, 10 domains uh, 10 domains of information security i think uh, in most of your organization if it is, if your organization is a bank invariably they really go through this they really go through this uh, so uh, this issp means uh, information security system practices and all so therefore you can just look at the 10 domains or we call it the common body of knowledge with regard to the information security management uh, so they are uh, the required skills for information security managers uh, now the agreement uh, came towards these uh, information security uh, domains and uh, and we call it the common body of knowledge and every person now who is going through the uh, security of information should have an understanding about these uh, uh, domains and he has to be well versed in those things <clears throat> Now, in addition to the individual certification, there must be guidance, guidelines to turn these skills into actionable items that can be measured and verified according to some international standards. Now, you can just look at these things. Uh, the, the international standard pertaining to this thing would be ISO 17799. That is uh, the international standards, 17,799. And there's a five level evolutionary path of increasingly organized, and that is the, the approach. I think uh, I have just given you some of these uh, outlines last time. So these outlines been uh, uh, thoroughly dis uh, discussed here, thoroughly uh, explained. Now these are the 10 domains. Right, we will uh, just go one by one with regard to the in domains. Now, then I will uh, just see the uh, earlier, I, I will show you the earlier type of presentations I have just uh, uh, forwarded to you earlier. Uh, under the cyber risk, Now you can just see the, the relevance uh, here. So that's what I just took the earlier uh, earlier things also here. Now you can just see the the way it can happen in an organization. So that really we have to just look at these things uh, under the information security management. There can be three types of insider threats which can arise. So, and all those domains has to be taken into consideration, uh, taken into the, uh, taken into account these things. Now, 
Now this is the approach uh, described uh, there. So you can just compare the things coming here together with these things. Right. Now, in that uh, ten domain uh, basis, uh, you start with the access control. Now, you can just uh, compare it with the earlier knowledge which you had, the insider threats and all. Methods used to enable administrators and managers to define what objects a subject can access through authentication and authorization. Now, this is a very important point in that domain. Now, you you have to just be careful about how that access is being uh, possible. So, the particular administration has to define uh, who can access through authentic authentication and authorization. Now, every person or every subject who is being allowed to access that uh, access that uh, to be to have a list of capabilities it can perform on each object so important areas include access control security models identification and authentication technologies and access control administration and single sign on technologies now i think this is a very important point to note so you can just have a good idea about these things and uh, in this regard what you can do is, uh, you can have a uh, practical observations. So I'm just telling these things in order to give you a guideline on how you can en enhance your know-how with regard to this uh, information security. So I think uh, that's a good thing for everyone because uh, rather than being a tech uh, risk manager, you you can be a, any other type of a staff member who needs to have this type of uh, knowledge. So therefore, and, and, not, and on the other hand, you need to have an idea or you need to have a certain type of uh, uh, sense about how your organization really uh, execute the security management practices in your organization. So therefore, it is a very good uh, opportunity for you to understand those things. So therefore, what you need to do is, uh, you need to see how this access control domain is being treated by your organization. So then, yeah, you need to understand the methods used to enable administrators and managers to define what objects a subject can access. So I think that, that needs to be clarified. Now, what do you mean by that? What objects means? Uh, the, the types of things or types of functions a person can access through authentication and authorization. So authentication means the password, uh, password uh, possibilities and all those things, authorizations, providing each subject a list of capabilities. Now, any person who is given authority should have that authority to carry out certain type of functions. So that is what it means. Now, under the access control, the important areas include access control, security models. There should be a particular model you have to follow. 
in order to control the access. So access control is really run through the password securities and other authentication limits. Then basically, I think everyone uh, knows about the sign on and whatever. So that those are sign on technologies. So I think uh, that gives you a good idea about it uh, with regard to the access control. Now, this is the first, uh, first of the 10 domains which you have, uh, which, which the uh, information security specialist been given. So that is what you call the common body of knowledge. Now, I think uh, in your organization, you can see how these things are being carried out with regard to the access control. Then telecommunications and network security. Now, since uh, most of the organizations have a very wide network, especially the banks. So the big banks in Sri Lanka now, they have a, a rather wide network of branches and other business units. And there should be a network security also. Telecommunication means now uh, everywhere you, you have to communicate with each type of business unit and all. Examination of internal, external, public and private network communication systems including devices, protocols, and remote access. So I think uh, that also gives a certain idea about the networking in, in your organization and how the networks are really uh, operated and how these networks uh, communicate uh, with each other or the network of uh, business units or network of branches, how they communicate with each other. So that is what you mean by telecommunications and network security. Now, the security aspects there. Now, if you uh, clearly uh, go through or if you uh, carefully go through it, examination of internal, external, when you say internal and external, those things are pertaining to the organization and public. It is the uh, overall, uh, you know, general public type of a thing and private network community systems, including devices, devices in the sense uh, the, the terminals, uh, the ATMs, uh, the, even uh, the uh, mobile uh, devices or whatever, then protocols and remote access. So this is the second domain. Now it's a, it's a rather wide uh, area where you have to cover. Then uh, the information security and risk management. It includes physical, technical, and administrative controls surrounding organizational assets to determine the level of protection. Now, here what I can tell you is, when you talk in terms of information security and risk management, they are, I think uh, we, we had a uh, rather comprehensive discussion on information assets. And the value of information assets really depends on its uh, availability uh, and uh, availability, integrity, and that is CIA, uh, availability, integrity, and uh, confidentiality. Now, these three things are very important with regard to information asset. And when you do the information security and risk management, yeah, you have to uh, really uh, concern have a concern on those three things. Now, all the physical, technical, and administrative controls are really uh, done uh, in order to safeguard the CIA of information assets. And the goal is to reduce potential threats and money loss. Money loss. Now, I think uh, up to now, we just discussed uh, three domains with regard to the information security uh, management. Uh, they are, you started with the access control. Then you went through the telecommunications and network security. Then we went into 
information security and risk management. Now the protocol, I don't know whether you have that uh, understand what do you mean by a protocol. Protocol is a particular cover or certain type of uh, uh, defense lines uh, surrounding something is it's called protocol. Now uh, that is the type of a cover. So the protocols also to be necessary in order to uh, in, have this uh, risk uh, and security management and information. And there you have to determine the level of protection. And that all depends on the severity of the risk you are expecting. So then what you need to do is you need to have a budget for all these things and you have to prioritize the most uh, severe and critical type of things. Right. Now this is uh, basically the information security and risk management as a general practice. Now when you go to the next uh, domain that is application security. Application security. Now, which means the controls placed within the application programs and operating systems to support the security policy of the organization. Now, I think you all know in a in an organization there can be several application programs several operating systems even even i mean not to a regard not regarding an organization even your phone has several applications so likewise in an organization there can be several applications not only the applications some other operating systems being uh, really uh, in operation. So those things, there should be a highly uh, effective security system for all these things, control system for all these things. And in order to see the effectiveness of these uh, uh, securities, you need to see what are the threats coming into these applications or operating systems and uh, design and what are the vulnerabilities and all that. So that is another domain in this. I think uh, that gives you a certain idea because now earlier we talked about the network and all then we we are talking about applications and operating systems. Right. Then another factor is cryptology, uh, cryptography. So this is a highly specialized knowledge area nowadays. And cryptography means uh, it's a technique, and uh, it is a technique uh, towards encryption. Now, encryption is a type of uh, codification or you just put it into a code and no one can uh, decode it and that's the security system and that that's a particular uh, particular way of maintaining confidentiality and integrity because no one can hack on that because it is secured in that manner and uh, through the encryptions Encryption is a type of uh, securitization and it's a codification type of a thing because no one can decode that. So decoding is not possible really. If the cryptography is done properly, the decoding is not possible by unauthorized people. 
there will be encryption protocols and applications and public key infrastructures. Now, for the time being, what you need to understand is this is something to do with uh, securitization of information. And that securitization is happening through encryption. Encryption, that is the word in use. Uh, now, that encryption is a methodology where you can do some codification to your information and without now when when codification is done and then we call it encrypt, encrypted data or encrypted type of things when the encryptions are being made it is no one uh, would be in a position to uh, record it and get it uh, i mean hack it or uh, get the uh, i mean reach the confidentiality and all sort of things cannot be done so this is what you mean by encryption so uh, the the methodology of encrypting something is called cryptography Cryptography. This is a type of a very specialized uh, knowledge area. Cryptography. I think you heard about cryptocurrencies also. Cryptocurrencies, bitcoins, and all those are cryptocurrencies. Now we talked about uh, four areas uh, under this domain so access control then telecommunications and network security information security and risk management application security and cryptography now uh, what you need to do is you need to see what type of cryptographical aspects are present in your systems or in your IT systems? That's the type of an observation you need to make at this moment. So you can just see how these uh, encryptions are being made in your particular levels of data or whatever in order to uh, maintain or preserve the confidentiality. So that's the type of uh, observation you need to make with regard to your organization. I think any, many organizations or any organization may have these uh, cryptographic uh, things where encryption is uh, done. So therefore, it's a very, very important type of a thing. I think then you come to a very important point where we call it uh, security architecture and design right now we we just uh, just had a discussion on uh, uh, cryptography i think this is also uh, very much connected to this to the cryptography the security architecture and design this area covers the concepts principles and the standards used to design and implement secure applications operating systems and all platforms based on international evaluation criteria such as trusted computer security evaluation criteria and common criteria. Now, this security architecture and design really uh, deals with concepts, principles and standards. You should design and implement secure applications. Now, when designing and implementing secure applications, the cryptography and all those things are important and uh, the concepts and principles uh, with regard to the organization uh, coming under this security architecture and design so for example say if you do some uh, encryption or whatever so that encryption should have a standard uh, practice and that those practices should be uh, i mean uh, recognized by the uh, international evaluation criteria so, and there are some criteria called trusted computer security evaluation criteria so so those uh, encryptions or whatever should follow the trusted computer security evaluation criteria that is what it means 
because this gives a certain uh, indication about the level of security available and the security architecture and design should have those uh, it should follow uh, certain concepts certain principles and certain standard uh, standards issued then operations uh, security operations security now i think uh, this is the fifth uh, or sixth one uh, controls over personal hardware systems and auditing and monitoring techniques such as maintenance of uh, audit verifications av training auditing and resource protection uh, preventive detective corrective and recovery controls and security and fault tolerance technologies now that really the operation security means uh, controls over people or personnel and hardware systems and auditing and monitoring techniques such as maintenance of uh, audit verifications trainings auditing and resource protection preventive detective corrective and recovery controls now all these are control type of things and uh, i think uh, in most of the organizing there is a uh, audit division called uh, is audit or we call it information systems audit or whatever now those people are really uh, interested with this type of activities and that is operation security now this is this is not a, a type of uh, thing which you do Uh, after some time or whatever this is an ongoing type of thing operation security and it's a, it's a monitoring part and auditing and all those things has to be done uh, daily or type of thing internal type so the resource protection and prevent there should be preventive activities detective activities and corrective activities and all that then the very important point uh, business continuity and disaster recovery planning i think we we just went through this uh, earlier also now the purpose of this area is to preserve business operations when faced with disruptions or disasters now here not only a disaster sometimes there can be disruption due to certain system error or whatever it is so that is also a type of thing which we need to understand and address and even without a disaster it can happen so then it will become a disaster <laughs> the main purpose of this area is to preserve business operations when faced with disruptions or disasters important aspects are to identify resource values perform a business impact analysis now actually now in in terms of business continuity the hypothetical type of situations are being created and then we see what type of impact which can come to the business through such event and it is a normal business continuity and disaster recovery plan it is available in uh, many organizations now and it's a it's a regulatory requirement also this testing is another uh, planning and testing is a regulatory requirement as i told you earlier also uh, the banks now have a regulatory requirement to do this uh, business continuity and disaster recovery testing uh, at least twice a year at least twice a year then you come to legal regulatory compliance and investigations now these are very much connected to the compliance and regulation level type of things because the legal also come in under that 
because uh, any organization should follow the, the legal uh, and statutory requirements, compliance requirements and all. So therefore, uh, if you don't follow that and if you non-compliant with something, then the, the organization has to face with severe penalties and it will be a highly reputation risk. It can become a very high reputation risk for the organization. So therefore, all of the organizations will have a very uh, concerned uh, effort to maintain this type of thing, the legal regulatory compliance and investigations. Computer crime, government laws and regulations and geographic locations will determine the types of actions that constitute wrongdoing what is suitable evidence and what type of licensing and privacy laws your organization must abide by. Now, this is a very important point to note. And if I think you have you have just in the in the global news, you found now several things uh, for the last couple of uh, weeks and uh, even a big organizations really face with severe penalties with regard to these uh, regulatory compliance and uh, statutory provisions areas. So therefore, this is a very important point to note and you have to be compliant with regulatory and statutory requirements. In the physical security or environmental security concerns set with threats, risk and countermeasures to protect facilities hardware, data, media, personal, main topics include restricted areas, authorization models, intrusion detection, fire detection and security. Now, the, all these are physical type of things. Now, these are the main domains of CISSP, that is CISSP is the uh, the control of uh, information security and system process. Right, we can just uh, start from the beginning now, that is access control is the first thing. And we have a, a certain type of uh, discussion on that. Then you have uh, telecommunications and network at the second, uh, security at the second one. The third one is uh, information security and risk management. Fourth one is application security. Then the cryptography. Then you have security architecture and design. Then operation security. Business continuity and disaster recovery planning. Legal regulatory compliance and investigations. Now, uh, then the last one is uh, physical uh, security. Now, uh, what I what I need you to do is uh, you just see how these things can really put into the operational risk management uh, knowledge. There, you can see the operational risk really deals with uh, the processes, systems, systems means the technology and all. So, therefore, now. Under that topic, the uh, this will be uh, coming under operational risk. Right now, you just see this. Now, whatever the case, even though we put it as IT managers, now this is very important for a risk manager because you, you really provide uh, the risk management or security for the for the whole organization to, uh, by doing this. Now, the top and foremost is security policy. There should be a policy. Now, that policy really looks after the organizational security. Yeah, you have asset uh, classification and control. Then you have access control. You have compliance, personal security, physical and environmental security. System development and maintenance, communications and operations management, business continuity management. 
Now this will have a, uh, this is a security model. And there you uh, have several aspects. Physical aspects are there, technical aspects are there, organization aspects are there. I think uh, you can think uh, loudly on this and see how these things are related. Now, in, in, a, in a security uh, policy or information security type of a policy, uh, you need to cover some physical aspects, the access control type of things and all, then technical aspects also. Not only that, uh, you need to see how organizational type of uh, concerns are uh, taken into consideration. Now, uh, and then another thing is uh, you need to check this. Uh, this is an ongoing thing and uh, every manager or every risk manager or someone has to uh, look into the prevention of any incidents, uh, security breaches or whatever. And if something happens, then it has to be detected then and there. And there should be a recovery process. So that is how you need to see how this management is done. Right. I think it's uh, it's uh, very uh, important to just see what is a threat like, and I, I, I just want to tell you, uh, it, it comes in many flavors, some with malicious intent, or others with supernatural powers or unexpected surprises. Uh, it can be deliberate acts of uh, espionage. Espionage is something to do with uh, some hidden activities where you can, uh, I think it's a sabotage type of a thing, information extortion or sabotage. In many targeted attacks between foreign nations, however, more often than not, it happens that the biggest threats can be forces of nature. So that is a, you know, we can't, we can't really uh, avoid that because sometimes if floods or hurricane comes, then it could be a, uh, physical uh, problem, uh, but there can be uh, man-made type of things, where yeah, hackers and all, uh, that, that could be a threat. But besides that, there can be several physical type of threats. Those cannot be avoided sometimes. That is why we, we need to have a, a business continuity and disaster recovery plan for any type of an organization. Because there, are, there can be several ins, uh, instances where an event cannot be avoided. Now it is, uh, you can look at this uh, diagram, the framework.
Now you can see the pyramid type of a thing where you start with physical and environmental security. Then the front end system security, that is the, the front level, uh, transaction level. And back end system is, uh, you know, the processing level. Then you need to have a comprehensive awareness on security. That is the level four. Because now level one starts with uh, physical and environmental security, which is, uh, 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 I mean, it's a highest lowest level or grassroots level. Then the front end system security is the level two. Level three would be the back end. And comprehensive security awareness is the level four. So overall, if you have all these things, then you have a definite security on the top. And you, if you if you look into the 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 way the visibility uh, increases, the visibility means the the know-how up to the physical and environmental security levels. It comes here from here to here and the sophistication now when you come to the level of level five the sophistication increases from here to here so that you have a very low sophistication at the lowest level that is level one but from uh, uh, i mean the visibility has to be at the level one. So that means now everyone knows that this we are, there will be a, a certain security system going on uh, from the physical and environmental security uh, basis. And if you going to these levels, four levels. And within those levels, the prevention, detection, and recoveries have been really operating. Now, this physical and environmental security, there you need to have some recoveries, detections and recoveries, and uh, because this is the point where you deal with the general public. Now you can just look at this uh, chart. Now, if you look at the this chart and this uh, diagram and the chart, there's a connection. Now you can see how the domain number and domain name would be applicable in all these layers, the levels. Now these levels, the layer five, here the word uh, use is layer and layer is the level. Layer, levels are given here. 
what's are given here so security policy is at the top level scope of applicability is this in operational uh, organization security information security infrastructure up to the layer 3 security of third party access up to the layer, layer 4 outsourcing up to the layer 4 then asset classification and control accountability for assets so this is a type of uh, example given regard to certain organization now this is a type of a summary given how the things been uh, really operated Now, as an exercise, what you can do is you can just get this uh, this uh, chart, and according to this chart, you can see whether your organization has a uh, process to achieve these things in your organization but i don't know whether it might be in different names but you can just identify whether the things are being in place or some of these things may be in place but some of these things may not be in place so therefore you can identify what are in place in your organization so that's the type of an exercise you can go through Now, I will just uh, get an example here. Now, we will go to the access control. Now, this is another domain. No? So, under the access control, now you can see the, the types of access controls being in practice. Business requirement for access control. Then, user access management. User responsibilities. Network access control. Operating system access control. Application access control. Monitoring system access and use, mobile computing and teleworking. So, all these things are coming under this particular organization's access control basis. Then, the next one is system development and maintenance. They are the security requirement of systems. Security in application systems, cryptographic controls, security of system files, security in development and support processes. No, what I what I want you to do is uh, you want to see how your organization has uh, planned these things 
in an organizational setup and whether some of these things even been applicable so that doesn't mean that uh, all organizations should apply these things but uh, you can see uh, approximately what are the types of things your organization has uh, already implemented so that's a good thing for you and, and you can have a good idea about it and even sometimes you might be in a position to suggest some requirements or some something to be done in the organization by looking at the vulnerabilities so that's a value addition to the organization so that is what you need to understand because all these things are not in not only in books but even it is in a book but what you can do is you can just see how you can apply it into your requirements and your 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 environment that is what we need to understand now uh, for you to understand the things uh, the threats and all how it uh, really uh, uh, say how it really comes now these things directly affects the threat agent now you can just start from this end and you see what will really what is really happening threat agent or whatever the uh, form the threat comes through someone or something and it will give rise to threat and when it exploits there would be a vulnerability and it will leads to a risk and it will affect security so in the other side uh, it can damage the asset and causes an exposure and it should be countermeasured by a safe guard now this is now you can just go by this way you can have a good understanding about this now you just uh, again i will i will just show it now through a threat agent some way of threat comes and it gives rise to a threat and it exploits vulnerability so if there is a vulnerability so uh, it will lead to a risk and it can damage the asset and causes an exposure exposure is a particular uh, amount of risk and it would be counter measured or there will be a counter through safeguard and it will directly affect the threat agent now you see the point no so this is a good uh, way of uh, explaining and we call it a threat process then we will see the types of common attacks and this is very important for you the common attacks yes what i feel is uh, you can note it down today's uh, lecture i just told you the first thing that is the common uh, so uh, ten domains i started with ten domains then i went to the uh, pyramid then we need we have come to the uh, system level things and this uh, scope of applicability and all that is ismm framework
and we now come to the thread uh, process and just see the common attack now i think this would be more important for you because uh, these are the normal and available type of things which you can really detect the first level the malicious code or we call it malware it's a broad category however it is typically uh, software designed to infiltrate or damage now it's a type of a virus malware it's a, it's a virus and it can really threat and it can infiltrate to a, uh, a particular system and it will damage the system without the consent of owner now malware is a, is a general term and under malware you can have viruses worms backdoors and trojans i have i think you have seen these things trojan host or something like that different types of viruses uh, now here they have said something particularly particularly difficult to identify are root kits which alter the kernel of the operating system the, the core of the operating system is really alter by these things and that will really uh, i mean it will be a disaster for the whole system and whole organization malware and under malware you have viruses worms backdoors and trojans that is what you call uh, in in general we call it malicious code then social engineering i think uh, you have already heard about it it is a type of a practice uh, people really do and what they do is they just uh, try their best to get information from our people by doing some uh, manipulations it can be a trick it can be a certain type of a uh, way people do some tricks they are one they do is they just uh, with some pretension they do something and then get the information very very critical information they extract from the person without the knowledge of person i think uh, you you have some idea about these things we call it social engineering in industrial espionage because uh, people can use these things uh, against a certain industry now they can breach the confidentiality they can they can just uh, uh, stall or uh, just uh, uh, get their trade secrets blackmail in them and technological surveillance spy on commercial organize all these things come under spy age in spam phishing and hoaxes spamming and phishing although different often go hand in hand spamming is the abuse of electronic messaging systems to indiscriminately send unsolicited bulk messages machine attacks the other one now that phishing attacks are normally done in order to get the sensitive information 
such as usernames, passwords and all. Credit card details. So people succumb to these things uh, without their own knowledge. Right now, I think uh, you are confident about these things. The common, what are the types of common attacks which can happen? Malicious code, uh, social engineering, industrial espionage, spam, phishing, and hoaxes. As per uh, now, this is a type of uh, little uh, old type of uh, information, but anyway, they are also you can see the uh, most uh, frequent one is Trojan. Now you can just look at uh, these things here. Now these are the types of attacks, uh, we can say denial of service and distributed denial of service. These are attempts to make a computer resource unavailable to its intended users, although the means to carry out Motives for and drugs of a DOS attack may vary. It generally consists of the concerted malevolent efforts of a person or persons to prevent an internet site. So that means now service has been uh, disrupted, denial of service for certain people. Now that is what you call DOS. And there's another thing called botnets. Now it, it refers to software robots used to refer to a collection of compromised computers. So it will at, uh, attack several computers under a common uh, command.
now our concern should go into the protecting mission critical systems Now, in order to do this, protecting mission critical information, we have to have information assurance. Now, information risk management alone will not help. So therefore, you need to have information assurance also in order to have this. Right, I want to just uh, show you something here. Now, even some of the things I have just omitted, but uh, what I want to do is I want to just show you the most important things here. So this is a type of a uh, hypothetical situation you can think about, where you can see how the damage can be if it happens. So these are the four situations where you can just think about. How much should it cost your organization if your e-commerce web server farm went down for 12 hours? Now, here, I don't know whether you can get an understanding about e-commerce web server farm. So that means now there will be a, a web server or whatever. So in your organization, there can be a server. So if that server fails and it is down for 12 hours, so then you need to think what type of a cost you may have to face in that situation. So that is type of a uh, calamity you can expect. Then 
uh, next one. But if your mainframe database that houses your reservation system was not accessible for an entire afternoon. So these are the types of uh, system failures or breakdowns you can expect in your organization. So then you can just think about if that is the case, what would happen? What would be the uh, impact or so on? Then what if your website was defaced and rerouted all your customers to a site infected with malicious JavaScripts? So these are the possibilities. Would any of these scenarios significantly impact your organization's bottom line? So, so these are the questions which where you can answer. So, so these are the mission critical type of things basically. So in order to have that protection, the I think the your organization should have uh, more than the information security management or information security risk management, something else or some more things they need to have. Now I think uh, you just uh, give your attention to this uh, information assurance. It's a very, very important uh, concept. Now information assurance is achieved when information and information systems are protected against attacks through the application of now you need to have that protection, but it, it is through application of security services, such as availability, integrity, authentication, confidentiality, and non-repudiation. Now, security services towards maintaining the availability, integrity, authentication of information, and confidentiality of information, and non-repudiation. No, I don't know whether you heard about this word non-repudiation. What is that? Repudiation means denying a transaction. So that's a very uh, dangerous thing. Where or say, say a person can say even a credit card. So you, you did a transaction on your credit card, but you said that you didn't know it happened. And you uh, just uh, ask the, the person not to debit your card, not to uh, you know charge your card. So then we call them chargebacks. So that is what you call repudiation. So now repudiation means if a certain person did the transaction, but he denied that he did that transaction. So that is what you mean by repudiation. So so this is a particular type of a. Uh, issue or challenge for the organization. So therefore, the organization should have a particular way of avoiding repudiation or they should not, I mean, they have to keep all the close, uh, doors closed for repudiation. So that is what you mean by non-repudiation. So non-repudiation also coming under information assurance. Now, all these things should uh, work on uh, a particular uh, sequence. And that sequence is the protection. First, first uh, I mean, the, the main thing is protection. And not only protection. Now, though you protect something, there can be a certain extent where your protection is failed. In that case, an uh, attack can, can be realized. So if that is the case, then it has to be detected. Then and then. So that is what you call detect. And not only detect, and after detecting the attack, you have to counter it, or you can say react. 
So that is the real paradigm of uh, application of information assurance. So you have a very strong protection system. Though it is strong, there can be some attacks which can be materialized. So if it materializes, then you need to detect it then and there. So that is the second uh, uh, competency you need to have, detection then and there. Not only detection, detection alone will not help and you have to react and you have to correct the situation as soon as possible in order to minimize the impact. So that is what you assure in information assurance. You assurance protection. Somehow if it fails, you assure detection if it goes wrong. And not only that, you assure the treatment also, the reaction. So the meaning is, uh, you know, in addition to the incorporation of protection mechanisms, organizations uh, should expect attacks and include attack detection tools and procedures that allow them to react to and recover from these unexpected attacks. Now, I think this is a very important uh, note where you need to uh, get a very practical, highly practical sense of these things. Though you say that you have a very strong security system, but somehow there can be a situation that security is breached. And there can be an attack. So you should not be complacent with your protections or the strength of your protections. But you always prepare for an attack. And not only that, as and when an attack happens, a successful attack happens, you need to detect it then and there. In no time, you need to detect them. So then what is the next uh, level of things which you need to have? You need to have a very, very successful reaction for that in order to minimize the impact. So if you have all these uh, things in operation, then the organization's information can be assured. I think uh, you got the point. So that is the paradigm on which the things being uh, uh, planned. So in your system, there should be attack detection tools. There should be a pop-up in your computer that there was an attack like this. I have seen in some virus guards, they just uh, forward the message that there was an virus attack or whatever. We are now trying to just uh, deal with that or that type of a thing. So it is, it is for, it's for a very personal type of a computer, but if you have a computer system to be uh, protected and then you need to have uh, appropriate level of uh, protection mechanism, so uh, attack detection tools. And uh, I just want to uh, tell you something also here. Uh, it's, a, it's a critical type of thing where you might uh, sometimes uh, get some confusion with regard to information risk management, uh, information security management, cyber risk management, and all that. 
there are different uh, different aspects when you go into these terms even though you see it as very similar but there can be differences when you say information risk management it is the general term information risk management the information can be in different forms not only digital there can be some other ways so therefore information risk management when you say information risk management it is the highest level or it is the general level but when you say cyber cyber refers to uh, internet devices and other devices type of things and information related to that therefore cyber risk management is a, a subset of uh, information risk management security management is also the same information security means now every type of information not only the digital information but when you talk in terms of cyber security or whatever that that really means the uh, the cyber space the internet that type of things information coming out through that i think that you can clearly understand risk in essence the likelihood of something going wrong and damage in your organization or information assets due to the remediation of such risk an organization should try to reduce the risk to an acceptable level this process is known as information risk management risk to an organization and its information assets similar to threats comes in many different forms now you can see the types of uh, threats which can happen physical damage can have i think this is a very very frequent type of a thing physical damage fire water vandalism power loss and natural disasters then human interaction accidental or intentional action or inaction that can disrupt productivity equipment malfunctions now i think you you might have come across uh, many of these things in your organization equipment malfunctions failure of systems and peripheral devices internal external attacks hacking cracking and attacking misuse of data sharing trade secrets fraud espionage and theft loss of data intentional or unintentional loss of information through destructive means application errors those are computation errors uh, input errors now it will really affect the confidence oh, sorry uh, may, maybe the integrity of information i have the availability and these things to be identified assessed and evaluated to deal with now the, the the earlier type of threats can be really dealt with 
through administrative, technical, and physical controls. There can be organizational policies and guidelines to minimize the exposure. And there can be a guideline or whatever to be followed by employees uh, to deal with such threats. There can be security policies, password policies, hiring policies and all that. Now, when you talk in terms of technical controls, it will use software and hardware resources to control access to information and computer systems. Now, both basically those are the passwords, uh, firewalls, network intrusion detection systems and access control list and data encryption also part of it. And there's a thing called uh, a practice called the principle of least privilege. So that means any user should not be given any privilege which is over and above his authentication level or his uh, authority level. So that is the, the principle, principle of least privilege which requires that an individual program or system process is not granted any more access privileges than are necessary to perform the task. So it's like this. Now say for example, a, a manager is given authority to an overdraft of say 500,000 rupees. That is his highest level of overdraft. So he should not be given a higher value. So his privilege is restricted to that level. So he should not be allowed to do uh, even another 25,000 rupees uh, higher. So that is, I'm mean, just giving an example, but privileges should be very controlled. Then the physical controls, monitor and protect the physical environment of the workplace and computing facilities. Now, I, what I feel is uh, in information uh, risk management, uh, risk analysis is the most uh, difficult task. So that is a very, very uh, uh, challenging process in, in in risk management, I think uh, we need to give the highest uh, importance to risk analysis because management is not possible if you don't analyze the risk. So therefore, risk analysis is a very important point to note in risk management, but uh, it is a very challenging process. Now, why we can see why it is so challenging. Before the measurement is done, you have to identify the things and what are the vulnerabilities and threats. So these are important before measuring it. During a risk analysis, uh, the evaluate, uh, organization evaluates the cost for each security control that helps mitigate the risk. If the control is cost effective relative to the exposure of the organization, then the control is put in place. Now, this is a very important point to note. There are sometimes you, you should uh, place a control in order to avoid a certain risk, but that control should not be so costly. The cost is so high, higher than the, the risk. So it should not happen. So therefore, during a risk analysis, you need to assure that 
to a control is not as valuable or not as uh, valuable as the risk so if it is so then you you better uh, face with the risk so during the risk and risk an organization tries to evaluate the cost for each security control that helps mitigate the risk if the control is cost effective relative to the exposure of the organization then the control is put in place it should be cost effective so the measure of risk would be determined as a product of threat a vulnerability and asset values in other words so if you just uh, think about an asset or information asset or whatever the risk comes with the threat and the vulnerability the you have to get a multiplication of all there are two primary types of risk analysis quantitative and qualitative in quantitative risk analysis attempts to assign meaningful numbers to all elements now uh, in 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 this information risk analysis there can be uh, two things one is uh, quantitative analysis the other one is the qualitative analysis now in order to do a quantitative analysis a uh, risk analyst attempts to assign uh, for each these each of these factors a uh, meaningful number now in 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 risk analysis you need to uh, analyze assets you have to analyze threats and vulnerabilities for large costly type of projects this exact calculation is necessary it is typically performed to examine the viability of a project's cost or time and objectives quantitative risk analysis provides answers to three questions that cannot be addressed with determination deterministic risk and project management methodology such as traditional cost estimate in no project schedule now in in quantitative risk management uh, you can answer these questions what's the probability of meeting the project objective given all known risk then the second question uh, which can be answered is how much could the overrun or delay may be and therefore how much contingency do we need for the organization's desired level of certainty then the third question where in the project is the most risk given the model of the project and the totality of all identified and quantified risk but it is uh, unlike in quantitative risk analysis qualitative risk analysis does not assign numerical values but instead of for general categorization by severity levels where little or no numerical data is available but uh, most of the time uh, may may use uh, uh, color code now uh, we just uh, 
tried to explain the quantitative uh, assessments and qualitative assessments of uh, information risk and uh, i think uh, you got a certain idea about these things and uh, which is uh, very much uh, rational and if you can just uh, compare it with the organization setup and see what type of things uh, available in your organization uh, with regard to the information risk management and that will give you a certain practical aspects or practical sense about these things and that is more necessary than having uh, all these uh, text or whatever but i think the understanding is more important I, what i want to tell you is uh, now by going through these things you should get some some sense and through your practical aspects you can uh, enhance your understanding towards these things so we can have a break now and uh, we will start by 10:35 right now we have come again qualitative and quantitative risk we talked about then uh defense in depth now there we have a layered security mechanism so that is another concept where you can do a better security practice and we need to have contingency planning now you can just see the the way it can be done this is a comprehensive diagram where you see the different types of uh, applications where now you can just uh, start with the left hand side there you have system security administration now it it might go through the people physical security training and awareness policies and procedures facilities uh, countermeasures and personal security all these things uh, will go through the people 
then if you take the technology side there you have ia architecture then uh, criteria acquisition integration of evaluated products system risk assessment security policy so that is uh, coming under technology so then you have under operations the security policy uh, certification and accreditation then uh, key management and readiness assessments then the recovery and recovery a uh, five uh, way recovery and recovery and reconcil uh, reconstitution security management then under security metrics you have measuring effectiveness automating metrics designing security scorecards visualization analysis techniques and risk management is taken as physical controls that is one part of risk management then administrative controls and technical controls now all these things will lead to the defense in depth if you take the monitoring processes security monitoring mechanisms ir and forensics validating security intelligent outsourcing and security monitoring and effectiveness will again lead to the defense in depth then you take the other time uh, other type where you have physical security then you have facility requirements physical access controls data center security personal practices mobile security and that goes to the physical security and uh, here physical access controls identification is there authentication is there authorization is there and in uh, uh, physical security now all these aspects to be taken into consideration and data security data classifications access control models roles and responsibilities coming under data security and host based security there it goes to systems and network security and it will lead to defense in depth now when you say host host based security you have operating system hardening patch management antivirus then duty encryption software intrusion detection systems backup and restore capabilities systems event login and firewalls those are coming under host based security then a network based security under network based security you have sniffers and packet recording tools intrusion detection systems anomaly de detection systems firewalls application layer firewalls alert correlation and automation and intrusion prevention systems now all these things lead to the network based security and it will lead to systems and network security and it leads to defense in depth then here you have business communication security uh, through this public and private internet connections internet and extranet communications now what do you mean by extranet extranet is uh, within the organization sorry intranet and extranet means intranet means uh, within the within the company and extranet is all over the world communication then virtual private networks vpns and all these things will lead to the business communication security and it leads to defense in depth and you have wireless security now under wireless security you got common protocols security issues common topologies uh, enhancing security controls 
satellite communications and assess in wireless security so wireless security also been taken into consideration and it, it comes to the defense in depth in web band application security there yeah, you have web communication active content web application defenses application security web security for protocols and web security now when you say defense in depth mind map we call it why we call it now this is a very sophisticated and integrated type of a thing where you need to understand and it gives a you know very compact idea about the things in in nutshell but even though you get a, a sophisticated picture here what i what i feel is you can really take uh, get this uh, particular figure as a guideline so that guideline gives you a very uh, clear understanding about the defense in depth एक नहीं भी अब जब मैं आ रहा मैंने कहा हाँ अरे कहते हैं जब मैंने भी करने हाँ right now uh, this can be a guideline for you and think I think uh, this will really comprehensively cover everything now you can see the meaning of defense in depth. and nothing no one is uh, spared here or everything is taken into consideration so highly comprehensive type of a thing because uh, it is in nutshell so so you can see the the types of uh, uh, domains also the domains are also coming here but uh, is not given in that name but uh, all those domains are coming and uh, uh, you can see the technical details also because uh, sometimes uh, if you are not a technical person you might really uh, omit something so here all these technical things been taken into consideration and this is this is called the defense in depth mind map then you have another diagram for contingency planning now this contingency planning been taken into consideration and it has given four aspects of contingency planning now one one part is uh, business impact analysis <clears throat> Now, contingency planning is uh, on the basis of business impact analysis, and in the on the basis of incident response planning, then disaster recovery planning, and business continuity planning. So, you can see how these uh, contingency planning can become a reality. So, therefore, this contingency planning is. really done on the basis of business impact analysis now business impact analysis done on hypothetical incidents and uh, the impact on those hypothetical incidents critical business activities so that is what you mean by business impact analysis and uh, one way of uh, doing contingency planning is going through the business impact analysis and on the basis of business impact you can have a contingency plan that is one way of doing it 
then the other thing is uh, planning on the basis of incident responses so you have some hypothetical incidents and you need to plan the responses then uh, there can be disaster recovery planning or whatever when when a disaster happens or when a disaster happens what type of a recovery process you should be initiated so that you should initiate and that is on the basis of disaster recovery so so that all depends on the type of disaster the types of uh, calamities and all and the third fourth uh, dimension is the business continuity planning now how this business continuity planning is uh, you have to have a plan for business continuity and that contingency plan is on the basis of maintaining the business continuity right we can now go to the different aspects of these things under each heading now you see the business impact analysis that is bia there are you first first of all what you do is you do the threat attack identification prioritization then you do the business unit analysis then attack success scenario development and what potential damage assessment and subordinate plan classification so then the response now you have a preparation identification containment eradication and recovery then you have disaster recovery plan in there you have disaster recovery plan crisis management and recovery operations in the business country plan establish continuity strategies continuity management and plan for continuity of operation now you have if you go uh, vertically along these boxes you will have a steps for the uh, business impact analysis say in the, the leftmost one you can have the business impact analysis and if you go vertically from the upper box to the lower box you will get the sequence of steps in uh, second part also in second column also incident response planning also you have the same type of a consequence you can just follow the boxes and in the same manner you have the other two areas also now you got a good idea about defense in depth by looking at the diagram and then we are now trying to discuss about contingency planning i think this is very important contingency planning because in a contingency how are we going to face with that there you have under four headings business impact analysis incident response planning disaster recovery planning and business continuity planning now if you take in uh, more details an incident response plan it's a detailed set of process and procedures that anticipate detect and mitigate the impact of an unexpected event so that might compromise information resources and assets now there are six major phases as i just mentioned in the earlier system the preparation identification and so on and so forth now preparation is the planning and reading the event for security incident then identification to identify a set of events that have some negative impact on the business and can be considered a security incident now this is a very important point to note and the the particular committee has to identify 
a particular incident as an uh, incident where it can have a negative impact on the business. <clears throat> so that's the type of a decision to be taken by the committee. And containment during this phase, the security incident has been identified and action is required to mitigate its potential damage. So as soon as identifying the incident, is containment. Then the eradication, after it is contained, the incident must be eradicated and studied to make sure it has been thoroughly removed from the system. Then the recovery is bringing the business and assets involved in the security incident back to normal operations. And there should be a lessons learned and I think uh, uh, if you have uh, gone through your disaster recovery process in your organization and as uh, requested or as, uh, as uh, required by the regulators, the organization has to do uh, two, two uh, disaster recovery testing per annum per year. And there, the most important part is you need to document what type of lessons you learn during the disaster recovery testing. So that's a very important point to note where you can have these lessons learned uh, documented and at a future scenario or at a future event, you will be able to deal with such scenarios, or such events in a, in a successful manner. <clears throat> Now you can say, see, when a threat becomes a elite attack, it is classified as an information security incident. If now you have been given the, the reasons on which you can classify an incident as a information security incident. Now, these are the types of uh, features uh, an incident, uh, information security incident has. It is directed against information assets. It has a realistic chance of success. If threatens the confidentiality, it threatens the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information assets. Now you can see what is an incident or information threat or whatever. So you can identify such incident if it is directed against information assets, if it has a realistic chance of success. If it threatens the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of information assets. <clears throat> I think uh, this is a very important point to note towards uh, information security mismanagement. Then we can see under the business continuity planning basis, what should be the sequence of events or sequence of things. Right, the, the business continuity planning is a process where you ensure critical business functions continue during a disaster and it is managed by the top officer or CEO of the organization really and it, it should activate together with disaster recovery plan. DRP and it should re-establish critical functions at alternate sites actually the disaster recovery planning is the preparation for and recovery from a disaster whether natural or man-made 
it is an incident that has become a disaster because the organization is unable to contain or control its impact. But these two things most of the time uh, go concurrently. These are the, the, the underlying features, clear delegation of roles, execution of alert roster and notification of key personnel, clear establishment of priorities, documentation of the disaster, action steps to mitigate the impact, alternative implementation for various system components. DRP must be tested regularly. So when you say tested regularly, this has been given under uh, requirements, regulatory requirements. And as per the banks in Sri Lanka, they have to do DRP uh, at least twice a year. Now, if you look at these things, you will see these things uh, under uh, the mind map of uh, uh, defense in depth. And you can see the Defense Security Management uh, uh, base or what are the things which you can establish in order to have the information security uh, at a successful stage. You need to have physical security, data security, systems and network security, business communications security, wireless security, web and application security, security policies and procedures, and security employee training and awareness. Now, all these things are very much important for you to maintain the information security. Now, these are the types of uh, security features. Firewalls, antivirus, anti spyware, encryption in transit, encryption, file encryptions, the storages, application firewalls, endpoint, virus guard, or whatever. I think uh, in these uh, particular devices, you can see the highest uh, uh, percentage is on uh, antivirus. Then the next one is the firewalls. I think in your all organizations, these antivirus and firewalls are in place. Now, again, there are the physical security, and I think we have discussed about it. What, is, what do you mean by physical security? Uh, then facility requirements are there.
Now another important point. Authentication versus authorization. So I think uh, this two words are used uh, on and off, I mean, interchangeably. It's crucial to understand that simply because someone becomes authenticated does not mean that they are authorized to view certain data. There needs to be a means by which a person after gaining access through authentication is emitted in the actions they are authorized to perform on certain data, such as read-only permissions. So the authentication is type of uh, uh, applicability or you can say uh, ability. But authorization is uh, a part of it. So authentication does not mean that everything can be done through the authentication. He can access only the authorized areas. So then if someone to uh, access something, he should have the authentication and the authorization both. Then you can see the protecting data with cryptography. So uh, in, the, in the form of data protection, uh, so this is what you call cryptography and that is encryption. Then data leakage, prevention and content management. All these things are coming under information security. Then securing email systems. Now I think uh, for all of your organizations, this must be a very important aspect of uh, data security management or information security management, securing email systems. With access to the mail server, an attacker can snoop through anyone's email, even the company CEO's password files or whatever. So therefore, it is very impo important for you to have an email system secured. Then the next uh, item is the systems and network security. Actually, it is the core of the information security. Uh, and now under the system and network security, you have the host based security at the beginning the host uh, systems is the core of where data sits and is as accessed and this is a server like thing and so it is therefore also the main target of in many intruders regardless of the operating system platform that is selected to run certain applications and databases the principles of hardening systems are the same and apply to host systems as well as network devices as we will see in the upcoming sections steps required to maintain host systems in as secure a state as possible are as follows. Now these are the types of uh, security which we can uh, install in the uh, host. The first one is the hardening of operating systems. Now they are uh, base operating system uh, would go through a series of checks to make sure no unnecessary exposures remain open. And in organizations, there is a uh, general guideline with regard to the uh, OS hardening in various platforms of operating systems. 
then uh, the next part is uh, it is information uh, network security removing unnecessary services in in you know, some operating system there are uh, number of other services provided but there is no real need on that so, so if so those services can be uh, removed removed then there's a very important thing called patch management there was a big uh, issue and there was a big calamity and uh, big uh, loss was made by a certain bank in uh, 2015 uh, with a patch related incident and that was a fraudulent activity and it was enabled through a uh, issue in a patch management uh, process so therefore this patch management is a very very important uh, thing in a, in a network security environment so i think uh, you all heard about it in in, in my I, I guess that you heard about that incident in sri lanka i, I i'm not going to divulge uh, the name of the organization or whatever but there was a big issue in one organization very very famous organization uh, with regard to a incident of patch patch management that was a great uh, level of fraud through the credit cards an antivirus is very important intrusion detection systems firewalls data encryption software backup and restore capabilities and system event logging so this is a very very important thing even i can remember uh, very early stages in uh, digitalization or in 1980s late 1980s also this uh, this was a must for a system event logging now this event logging really gives a very secured environment because no one can tamper with the system or access the system without being noticed so whatever the issue whatever the uh, shortcoming of the system being popped up and we don't need to do any report or whatever we don't call we don't know to call any reports but automatically the it will be locked so this is a very very important uh, aspect of uh, security so i think uh, any information system security person or security management person or risk manager should have a very good idea about this system event logging because this login is a very very important thing and it should really automatically uh, it should happen automatically because uh, no one can then get rid of that now if a fraudulent person, uh, person wants to log into a system without uh, just uh, giving uh, that uh, without giving that uh, knowledge to the other people so they can do if the system doesn't have this facility if the, if the system have a uh, event login type of uh, automatic event login system then no one can uh, really enter into the system without knowing i mean uh, without other one's knowledge so this is a very important point to note excuse me sir yeah <laughs> sir uh, the system event login is it mean yeah. the activity login or only event login event login in the sense now did yeah, you yeah, get yeah, my yeah, 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 yeah. point no it's like this now when you say system when it is in operation anything which can go through the system can be taken as an event so therefore either it can be a financial event or financial transaction or something else can be taken as an event and event login means when such uh, intrusion or some type of uh, connection comes into the scene then it will be reported by the system automatically so that is what you mean by 
system event login. So it can be a, a, a attempt of an access. It can be attempt of a login. It can be a, a security violation. It can be a transaction. It can be a transaction which has not been authorized by the system. So anything can be can be an event login. So therefore, if something of that nature happens, the system has that ability to pop up, open up. So then uh, everyone get to know that that has happened. So I can give a very good example of this thing. Uh, once I can remember, there was a, I'm, I'm, I'm referring to a very early stage uh, incident, uh, but those days also this was on. So uh, I can remember, uh, so there was a particular transaction and when the transaction entered, the transaction was executed in one file only, not in the other file, because in the, in the system, there are two files. One is the transaction file, uh, the one is the, uh, we call it uh, uh, transaction file and uh, master file, right? So these are the two files on which the transaction is uh, reported. And what happened was this particular transaction was uh, done and due to a system error, it was only recorded in the transaction file, but not in the master file. Now, because of that, it was reported as a system error and the particular transaction was not gone into the activity report. So then it had not been taken as a transaction and the particular transaction went into the error account. Now, when we checked the error account, only we found that there was a transaction in the error account. We, didn't, we, we couldn't find the reason, but when we looked at the activity report, we found the system log that it had not been recorded in the uh, master file. So that error was reported. That, that was the log. And normally we, we had the practice of looking at the system logs at the uh, end of the activity report. So since that particular log uh, system was there, we have been able to find out the error. You, you got my point. So therefore, anything. Now, as you say, it is, yeah. What is the point? Uh, yeah. uh, uh, when I, I discuss with our IT yeah. team, yeah, they they told that they can give only last logi. Ah, uh, no, no. no. No, it's, it's a, not the there. case is this way. Now, uh, this IT people, I mean, they they try their yeah, best to... His history uh, report. Uh, uh. No, login Only history also can be last found. Last if it is log not, if it is not, it is a, it is a different... For the, yeah, the no, systems. No, no, uh, no, no, no. I, I, I think uh, it's a type of, uh, uh, you know, it's their avoidance type of uh, tactic. Anyway, what I feel is that the, the log should be there. The log should be there. Because otherwise, what happens is anyone can uh, do anything with the system, no? If it is not there. So therefore, it should be there. So if, if, we, if we don't have that type of a device, we should not really allow that system to uh, uh, put in operation. Right? So, so that is the most important thing to note. Uh, but they might say that because in order to just uh, uh, avoid the inconvenience, they normally say that. But uh, uh, now if you talk with the higher up or whatever, they will really accept that. Because otherwise, how can we see the uh, integrity of the system? We have to be very much important. We have to be very much uh, particular about the integrity of the system. So the system integrity is really uh, checked by that system logs. The logs are there, but only the now it is real a little difficult for you to get it. But anyway, it, is, it should be there. If it is not there, the system has a uh, integration or we call it uh, 
uh, integration error. That's an that's a that's an error of the system. If you can't do that. Now I have seen several uh, software people, the IT people, they wanted to just uh, keep their superiority by giving all this misinformation, right? So, so you have to be careful when you deal with such people. You got my point? Yeah. Thanks. So then uh, we can go to the network-based security. There you have all these things. Uh, it's a communication highway we are talking about and everything can happen uh, between all the host systems. So, and, and uh, most of these network-based security devices, uh, they can perform detect or protect functions in one of the two ways. One is signature-based or anomaly-based. Uh, Signature-based detection or prevention is similar to uh, audiovisual signatures that look for known traits of a particular attack or malware. Anomaly-based systems can make decisions based on what is expected to be normal on the network or per a certain set of standards uh, or whatever, usually after a period of being installed in what is called learning no monitor mode. There are different uh, talks in terms of intrusion detections uh, and all these things are coming under network uh, security devices. And intrusion preventions. Now, to prevent intrusions, the firewalls have been installed. Packet filtering is another form. Proxies. application layer firewalls, intrusion prevention systems. Then under business communication security, uh, the communications also to be secured. Those are not sometimes may not be the digital, but something else. They are also you have to go into the details. Now these are the these are very important. General rules for self-protection. Access to a user's own IT system must be protected in such a way that system settings can only be changed subject to authentication. System start must always be protected by requiring appropriate authentication. Now that is IPL. We call it IP here. Yeah. Initial program loading. There's a thing called uh, uh, IPL. IPL is uh, starting the computer. Initial program loading, we call it. They are, uh, I think, the proper uh, authentication uh, should be there for someone to open the system. So that is IPL. Now you can see the, the next line automatic update procedures require this and the system start can only take place from the built-in hard disk. So exception can be given for this type of situations. Now you have a automatic update procedures, the system update, then the start can only take place through a built-in hard disk. So if that is the case, uh, authentication is not required, but if not, the authentication is required for any, any system start. Now you can just look at this uh, diagram. Now in this diagram, you can see co. Then you have the intranet. What do you mean by intranet? I think in your organizations also there is a intranet. So that is the communication device or internal network or whatever. You can exchange. Uh, communications with your own people, the staff members. 
the organizational members now most of the time the the policies and all those things are uh, given in that intranet you are in a position to get the circulars all things in the intranet but there you have your business partners and extranet also extranet means you you deal with other people in that uh, network but internet is a worldwide thing so then you have to deal with external organizations global organizations and public then you go to the internet so that is how the uh, exchange of information is uh, happening so you can just see the picture here the, we call it the business communication cloud right all these things are i think these are general type of things and mean protection resources employees must ensure that their protection resources cannot be subject to snooping while data required for authentication is being entered so that is like you know as example password entry during login employees must store all protection resources and records in such a way that they cannot be subjected to snooping or stolen personal protection resources must never be made available to third parties in the case of chip cards secure uh, id tokens or other protection resources required in a pin the associated pin uh, must be stored separately so i think these things i think you are you are you have some idea uh, now when you have a, a atm card given the atm card is given separately and the pin number sent separately to the host now all these things are uh, general type of things now when you say wireless security i think that all depend that all really uh, uh, applicable to the wifi and all Wi-Fi networks. So wireless networking enables devices with wireless capabilities to use information resources. Now I think you all know that there is a thing called uh, wireless. Even the printers can be now used through the Wi-Fi. There is no other uh, connection, no no wire connection, no whatever. Uh, without wires, you are in a position to uh, operate a printer. You can get the printouts. Uh, having the connection through uh, wifi and you all know that the mobile devices can be connected through uh, bluetooth that's another another uh, type of a wireless uh, connection now now the it has to be secured that is what it means wireless networking enables devices with wireless capabilities to use information resources without being physically connected to a network a wireless local area network or we call it wlan no Uh, WLAN, uh, local area network. We call it wireless local area network. It's a group of wireless networking nodes within a limited geographic area that is capable of radio communications. Now you can see in your uh, even even now we have uh, residential type of Wi-Fi and all. Those are uh, I mean it is uh, known as uh, wireless uh, local area network. so i think in your mobile phone also you can just go into this type of things and that is uh, regarding the wireless security and and uh, if you want to access a uh, wifi or whatever you need to know the password or whatever it is password uh, uh, controlled
Now you can see a diagram here. The way it is being provided, the security networks. There are different uh, ways of putting it. Oh, the, the, the organization uh, down in these things is the Institute of uh, Electronic and Electrical Engineers. IEEE, we call it. It's a very important organization. Now, these are the main uh, protection devices, so protection methods for data protection. Enhanced user authentication mechanisms, cryptographic key management, data confidentiality, data origin authentication and integrity, and replay protection. You can't replay something. So that is the protection. Now cryptographic key means uh, now there are situations where you can encrypt something. In order to encrypt something, you need to have a cryptographic key. Now this cryptography or whatever is possible through a certain computer program where we call these programs are based on several algorithms. Now, what is an algorithm? Algorithm is a certain uh, mathematical uh, instructions and it is being given in a certain mathematical form. Basically, the, the matrices and all such type of things. So, those algorithms are the set of instructions. Now, the cryptography really based on those algorithms. Those are called cryptographic algorithms. So, these algorithms are dealing with the data now in the intercrypto cryptography or now cryptography is the, the, the subject or the, or the real knowledge area. Encryption is the activity. Now, through cryptography, you do the encryption. Now that encryption is uh, really necessary in order to preserve the confidentiality of information, integrity of the information and the key generation or availability of the information. So these are the types of uh, well-known algorithms uh, coming under confidentiality and integrity. These are the different types of algorithms used, cryptographic algorithms. Now, though these algorithms are really mathematical instructions, but I think you don't need to worry about these things. But only thing what you need to know is the cryptography is really operated through algorithms. That knowledge is enough for you. So, but you know, you need to know what is an algorithm. Algorithm is a set of mathematical instructions. So that is what you mean by algorithm. Now, when you talk in terms of, I think, I, I think this is another uh, important part. Now, earlier to application security, you need to go through this uh, uh, web security. Now, 
Now through the web, uh, I think uh, mo most of the organization now provide several services. Uh, now they, they, through their websites. So then the websites should have very secured uh, form. And these are the types of uh, threats. Uh, the people who use websites might uh, come across. Vandalism, uh, financial fraud, and privilege access. Now, privilege access means some people have privilege access, but they can really uh, violate some of the things. Theft of transaction information, theft of intellectual property, denial of service attacks, Input validation errors, path or directory traversal, Unicode encoding, URL encoding. So URL is a particular link to the website normally. So if someone encodes that, then there will be some issue. So now all these things can happen. That is a threat, public facing website if you have, so these threats will be there. Now these are the uh, web application defenses that can be implemented. Web application firewalls you can implement, inclusion prevention systems or uh, system uh, proxies on the firewall. Then we go to the application security. An integrated approach to application security. Now application security has to be done through people, policies, standards. Then you have to have assessments and training. Now, when you talk in terms of application security, in this uh, digital environment, it's another critical need application. Because I think uh, in, in, uh, in an organization also, the use in of these uh, apps or whatever are very much uh, now very very many many type of applications are being used so those applications are also to be secured and it has to be secured under the following basis you need to secure it through people's activities and uh, policies and standards and assessments, basically, and training also, awareness. Then there, are, I think uh, there will be another uh, description given on each of these security policies and procedures. Those are described here. Employee training. Right. I think uh, this 10 uh, commandments with regard to the uh, security employee training and uh, South Seta is that it is given here. Security employee training and awareness.
now this is a type of a frontline activity why do you say that even though this is coming under the risk management operations risk management this is a job of everyone job uh, i mean this is a job which has to be uh, carried out by all the frontline employees so you can just see the the 10 commandments of uh, security employee training uh, activities number one is uh, information security is a, is a people rather than a technical issue it's a people issue information security because the threats are really posed by the people rather than uh, any other things if you want them to understand speak their language so so actually the 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 way of giving awareness is to uh, convey these things in their language if they cannot see it they will not learn it so even now you all really listen to uh, this type of uh, presentation or whatever but if you don't have any type of uh, experience of this nature all these things are in vain no 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 way of uh, getting it no way of get, getting that so therefore you all should have that uh, type of thing so you you can imagine what really happened in your organization and you can really compare with these things what you are learning and you some very very uh, few questions been asked even so that means now uh, most of the people may passively listening to these things that's all but if you can ask questions then then at, that will really enhance your awareness make a point so that you can identify it and so can they so now in in your organization also you need to uh, lead this information uh, transfer process to the ground level never lose your sense of humor make your point of support it and conclude it always let the recipients know how the behavior that you request will affect them then you need to see that there are some people who understand these things so you can really uh, be with them and then take them as opinion leaders and you can have a formal type of a training methodology and be timely and uh, you have to do things as and when it is required now this is a little high level type of thing where you uh, provide training to your staff members is given in a schedule test measures are also given there is a small uh, agenda given here an agenda for action when implementing critical security mechanism
Now, I don't, I don't know whether you have heard this word earlier, the forensic investigation. Now, what do you mean by forensic? Forensic means now, if you want to do a legal process, so uh, legal suit against someone with regard to a malpractice or whatever, so then you need to have a forensic investigation. So that is what you mean by forensic investigation. It is, it is rather than, you know, rather than audit. I mean, it is at a, at a higher level than audit because audit is a is an internal type of process where you don't need to do any type of uh, uh, you know legal activities, the court uh, related activities, but it will really uh, end up with uh, uh, organizational type of activities where you you have been dealt with uh, disciplinary or whatever, and you will you will get a uh, warning letter or a, or a dismissal or whatever it is. But uh, in terms of a forensic type of a thing, that really gives uh, some implications on uh, court proceedings and legal action. So without a solid log management strategy, it becomes nearly impossible to have the necessary data to perform forensic investigation and without monitoring tools, identifying threats and responding to attacks against confidentiality, integrity or availability, it becomes much more difficult for a network to be compliant and an incident response or forensics investigation to be successful. It is critical that the mechanism be in place to do the following uh, task. Number one, securely acquire and store raw log data for as long as possible from as many disparate devices as possible. While providing the search and restore capabilities of these logs for analysis. Now, it's like this. You have to go to several devices and see what are the types of logs there. And monitor interesting events coming from all important devices, systems and applications in as near real time as possible. So you can really get uh, get reports from several places. So that is what you call incident reporting type of things. So that also you can do. Unregular vulnerability scans on your hosts and devices and correlate these vulnerabilities to intrusion detection alerts or other interesting events, identifying high priority attacks as they happen. And minimizing false positives. So log management is a very important uh, aspect of these things. Aggregate and normalize event data from unrelated network devices, security devices and application servers. Analyze and correlate information from various sources such as vulnerability scanners, firewall servers and so on. Conduct network forensic analysis, create customized reports, increase the value and performance of existing security devices, improve the effectiveness, IT risk management personnel, regularly meeting with compliance and forensic requirements by securely storing all event data. Now this gives you a summary proceedings of uh, security monitoring, 
check over log management, correlation and alerting, compliance reporting and forensic analysis. Now here you can just get an idea about uh, security validation techniques used by organizations that was a little uh, older one. Now these are the types used in uh, different organizations. They use internal audits, automated tools. I think uh, at, that at that time uh, the internal audits were the most frequent uh, method of uh, uh, validations, internal audits. That is the highest, uh, or the most frequent one. Then automated tools are there. Then external audits are there, web monitoring, email monitoring, internal pen testing, and in external pen testing also. Uh, in, at that time, uh, about 13% of organizations didn't have uh, any technique. But I think the, the situation is different now. Right, okay. Now there's a small uh, quiz like end of chapter. So you can just look at it. And this is a, this is a uh, I mean, uh, rather joyful act. The first uh, one, you have to say whether it is true or false. Now I will read it and you have to say true or false and you can just put your answer uh, under the chat. Uh, information security management as a field is ever decreasing in demand and responsibility uh, in demand and responsibility because most organizations spend increasingly larger percentages of their IT budgets in attempting to manage risk and mitigate intrusions, not to mention the trend in many enterprises of moving all IT operations to an internet connected infrastructure known as enterprise cloud computing. Now again, I will read information security management as a field is ever decreasing in demand and responsibility because most organizations spend increasingly larger percentage of their IT budgets in attempting to manage risk and mitigate intrusions, not to mention the trend in many enterprises of moving all IT operations to an internet connected infrastructure. So uh, you have to say whether it is true or false. Anyway, I will uh, just uh, pause for some time and even the second one, information security is a business problem in the sense that the entire organization must frame and solve security problems based on its own strategic drivers, not solely on technical controls aimed to mitigate one type of attack. So that's the second one. So I think the third one also I will just go through. Uh, in defining required skills for information security managers, the ISC has arrived at an agreement on 10 domains of info and security that is known as the common body of knowledge. Right. Now these three questions you have to answer. You have to say whether it is true or false. That's a, that's a simple activity. So you do that uh, for these three things, three questions. Or even uh, say there are only five questions. Uh, since uh, there are only five questions, I will I will go to the other one also. Number four, threats to information systems come in many flavors, some with malicious intent, others with supernatural powers or expected surprises. So that is the fourth one. Fifth one is uh, threats are exploited with a variety of attacks, some technical, others not so much. 
so all these things you have to answer and the answer should be other, otherwise either true or false so you have to put it that way so just do it i mean i will just give you time about uh, 10 minutes so you can really put it uh, on the on the chat so you can say question number one true or false question number two true or false likewise we have to say Yes, you can uh, you can uh, go to the other questions also. No, not only number one, uh, up, up to uh, number five. Can you see it on the screen? Fifty. 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 Yes, I think uh, some of the people are given these things. Uh, uh, it seems uh, 
Uh, when you say false, uh, what is the number now? Camera has given it as false. I think number one would be false, no? Yes. Yes. Of course, I think uh, that is for your your interest. I am just giving this. Uh, so, uh, I think uh, looks like that you are you are getting it. And number one, uh, number one statement is false. It is correct. The rest of the statements are true. Right? Then, then I can just show you the. Uh, the other things also. Here you have uh, and some multiple choice questions also. The art of manipulating people into performing actions or divulging confidential information is known as the multiple choice question. And number two, what describes activities such as theft of trade secrets, bribery, blackmail, and technological surveillance, as well as spying on commercial organizations and sometimes governments? I think these uh, questions are rather easy. Number three, what is the abuse of electronic messaging systems to indiscriminately send uh, unsolicited bulk messages, uh, many of which contain hoaxes or other undesirable contents such as links to phishing sites? What is that? And Number four, what is the criminally fraudulent process of attempting to acquire sensitive information such as usernames, passwords, and credit card details by masquerading as a trustworthy entity in an electronic communication? Then number five, what requires that an individual program or system process is not granted any more access privileges than are necessary to perform the task? Right. I think uh, if you can answer these questions, uh, you can take about, uh, say, 10-15 minutes, you can answer these questions. Uh, right. Before going into that, uh, I will just uh, say, uh, anyway, I have not seen your voices. Yes, uh, with regard to the uh, true false questions, the first question is, uh, first, uh, first statement is false, all other statements are true. Right now, you try on the the second part there. That is the multiple choice. Yes. Question number
क्वेश्चन नंबर वन Now it says the art of manipulating people into performing actions or divulging confidential information is known as. I have seen one answer, but uh, you should uh, think twice and give an answer. Yes, uh, first question uh, answer C is correct. That is social engineering. Social engineering, correct. And you go to the second one. Yes, you can just uh, attempt uh, question number two also. Question number two. Yes. Yes, question number two is uh, correct. Industrial espionage. B. Then you go to number three. What is the abuse of electronic messaging systems to indiscriminately send unsolicited bulk messages, many of which contain hoaxes or other undesirable contents, such as links to phishing sites? Here's number three. Question number I think all these things are under the general knowledge, whatever it is. But my, my, I think uh, up to now, I think you have you have gained uh, various uh, types of knowledge with regard to this uh, cyber and information security for the time being. Even even a layman uh, knows about it. Uh, one has given an answer, but uh, just think about it, think over it, because uh, there are more relevant answers. Yeah, I think. Uh, this is correct uh, when you say uh, what is the abuse of electronic messaging systems to indiscriminately send unsolicited bulk messages now this gives the the form right 
that is what you call spamming a is correct in number 4 what is the criminally fraudulent process of attempting to acquire sensitive information such as username passwords and credit card details by masquerading as a trustworthy entity in an electronic communication so there you have something yes yes i am i am referring to question number 4 Yeah, question number four, that is fishing. Fishing. Correct. Right. We'll go to the question number five also. What requires that an individual program or system process is not granted any more access privileges than are necessary to perform the task? this is also we have already gone through this uh, in our lesson yes yes i think the 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 simple answer is there direct answer is there yes now uh, we are now referring to the question number 5 yes yes i think uh, that is correct the the number 5 the answer is b that is principle of least privilege right now i think uh, you got a certain uh, fair understanding about this information security management and uh, types of uh, practices you can follow in your organizations and what my question here is uh, to what extent your organizations are now geared to these things and that of course uh, the answer should find should be found by you so that is my uh, word of today anyway i just want to give you another uh, you know just to go through the the slide show which i prepared earlier on cyber security to give you another uh, remind remind with regard to what we have done now this one which i i just uh, did this presentation uh, two weeks back now here i used the word cyber security risk management integrated approach i just want to show you that again identify and analyze in and evaluate in cyber risk then you have a six part approach for the cyber risk management now what i need you to do is you need to just uh, have a comparison with these things together with what we did today that is what you need to do so you have to see the similarities and 
differences in these two things? Yeah. That is what you need to do. Right. Of course, now these things are coming under, or in other words, it's part and parcel of the information security management. And you need to see the the realities or similarities and differences between these two things, and how you can really uh, put in cyber security also into that. Uh, with that, uh, anyway, do you have any questions? Uh, you can just. Uh, Forward it now. I can give you another few minutes to have some questions. And uh, uh, in the next week, I will give you an assignment. Uh, the assignment is on uh, credit risk and uh, operation risk both. And uh, you need to uh, do it uh, say since uh, in the in the mid of next week you will get it and uh, you need to provide it uh, or no before uh, say 30th of December so you have to provide it uh, to the IBS cell or no before uh, 30th of December. So I will uh, just uh, prepare an assignment on credit risk management and operation risk management and will forward to the IBSL and the IBSL will forward it to you. So then uh, it is uh, to be submitted uh, on or before 30th of December. Right. So that is the, uh, the uh, announcement I, I have to make today. Uh, and anyway, any anything uh, you need to clarify today uh, with regard to what we have discussed? So regarding the true false questions, uh, yeah. can you repeat the question for how did it become true? I mean, there is kind uh, of a... You mean, you mean uh, the, the first set of questions? True false? Yes, they are. They are the question. As for the question, yeah. can be mentioned as, uh, as kind of a supernatural power, something like that? I yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's there. I mean, if you if you go to the text again, you will see the same thing in the text. So supernatural means it is a type of uh, you know climatic type of things. Those are supernatural type of things. That is what it means. Supernatural means that. So in, in the nature, something happens. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, it is not the normal way. It happens in a in a in a very exceptional way. That is what you mean by supernatural. So therefore, it is uh, it is true. So you have another another issue, no? Another question? The other question is what? That's all, sir. That's all. Yeah. Ah, right. Okay. Anything else? Sir, can you yeah. please share these slides with us. Pardon? Uh, can you please share these slides with us? Because I think we haven't received this particular slide. Ah, this one, this one. Cyber, cyber, with regard to cyber security. Cyber security thing, yeah. Right, right, right. I will, I will tell them. Okay, thank you, sir. Right. Okay. Anything else? Sir, can you ask uh, the IVSL to send the previous recorded videos of the sessions? Uh, okay, okay. Right. I, I think uh, you have uh, you asked that question uh, last time also. No, if uh, if you are you are the person who asked that question earlier. No, sir, I didn't ask last week. Ah, right, right. Okay, okay. Anyway, I, I told them, but I don't know whether they have seen it or not. It's on YouTube uh, actually. You can watch it from YouTube. Okay, okay, right. Uh, I should be in the YouTube. Uh, right. Okay. Anything else? Right, right, right. Then, uh, then I think I want to just uh, right. I will. Uh, wind up and i thank all of you uh, uh, in your uh, live participation 
and uh, answering of these questions. And I really uh, uh, derive some type of satisfaction when you answer questions and uh, you uh, give correct answers. So that is my satisfaction anyway. So that will uh, really uh, enhance the uh, enhance the effectiveness of the presentation. So therefore, you all should uh, in future you all should uh, really actively participate in the presentation and uh, you try your best to answer questions. I thank you very much and I wish you all the best in your uh, forthcoming examination also. And I will provide the uh, assignment for you uh, in the mid of next week. Thank you very much.